Hey, we're going to look at a nice and quick number theory problem from a viewer. So our goal is to find all pairs of primes P and Q such that P to the Q plus Q to the P is also a prime number. So if you guys want to pause the video and give this a go right now, I'm not really going to give any hints because they kind of give it away really quickly. We'll jump right into the solution. Okay, so let's jump into the solution. So the first thing that we're going to use is the notion of congruence modulo n as well as Fermat's little theorem. So let's get each of those on the board right here. So like I said, we're going to use the notion of congruence modulo n and Fermat's little theorem. So let's recall those. We say that a is congruent to b modulo n if and only if n divides b minus a. You can also think about this as A and B having the same remainder when dividing by N. So we're going to use a very special case of that, which is when A is congruent to 0 mod N. That means that N divides A or A is a multiple of N. So that when you divide A by N, you get 0 as the remainder. Next, we've got Fermat's little theorem, which says that if P does not divide A, so in other words, A is not a multiple of P where P is a prime, then A to the P minus one is congruent to one mod P. Okay, so now that we've got these tools ready, let's jump into our solution. First off, we'll notice that P and Q may not both be odd primes. So let's maybe write down why that's the case. So notice if P and Q are odd primes, then P to the Q and Q to the P are odd, but that tells us that P to the Q plus Q to the P is even. Furthermore, we know that it's even and it must be bigger than two because given that P and Q are odd primes, that means they're bigger than one. Well, they're bigger than or equal to three which tells us that this is an even number which is bigger than or equal to four. But all even numbers that are bigger than or equal to four are composite. So P and Q cannot both be odd, which means one of them must be an even prime, but there's only one even prime, and that's the number two. So without loss of generality, we know that one of these is even, let's call it Q. So we've got Q is an even prime, which again is the number two. So now that we've got this set up, maybe we can make a chart to get some sort of guess going for the values of P that make this object still a prime given that Q is equal to two. So here's our little exploratory chart. So again, I've set Q equal to two, which means what we really need to calculate is P squared plus two to the P for different primes P. So that's what we've got going on here in our chart here. We've got this column is the P column, and then this column is the P squared plus two to the P. So for our prime P equals three, we see that we get 17, which is a prime. So I'll put a check mark next to that to say that, yeah, we got a prime in this case, so that's good. And then if P is five, which is the next prime, we get 57, which is three times 19. So that's no good. Notice that it's a multiple of three. If we plug in P equals seven, we get 177, which is three times 59. Again, that is not a prime, so that is no good. And interestingly enough, we get a multiple of three again. Finally, when we plug in three, P equals 11, we get 2169, which is another multiple of three. So it looks like not only do we never get a prime after P equals three, but it looks like they're all multiples of three. And I would say if we just got composite numbers after plugging in P equals three, that would not be enough evidence without testing some more cases to show that that was the only solution. But since they're all multiples of three, that gives us a lot of evidence that maybe this kind of object is always a multiple of three. Okay, so let's maybe make that claim. So my claim is going to be for all primes P bigger than three, we have P squared plus two to the P is a multiple of three. Okay, good. And the way that we'll show that it's a multiple of three 
is calculate its residue modulo three using Fermat's little theorem. So let's maybe go ahead and do that. So like I said, we're gonna reduce this modulo three. So we've got P squared plus two to the P like that. Reducing mod three, we get that this is going to be equal to, well, P squared mod three is the same thing as P to the three minus one mod P. So that's just the number one. And then we can think of two as being negative one modulo three. But since P is an odd number, because it's a prime bigger than three, we know that two to the P is the same thing as negative one to an odd number, which is negative one mod P, mod three, I should say. So let's go ahead and point out where those things come from. So here we get this red underline from Fermat's little theorem. And then we get this purple underline from the fact that two is negative one mod three and P is an odd number. But now obviously we get one plus negative one is zero. So this is congruent to zero mod three. So that means we've proven this claim, which means down this chart, we always have a composite. Okay, but that means our only solution is Q equals two, P equals three, or the symmetric copy of that. So let's write down all our solutions right here. We can have two comma three or three comma two. And that's a good place to stop.